Okay. You gonna do it then? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Imani Define and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me. Um, I still don't know what this channel is gonna be, but you know what? Here we are. And as you see, here we are in my kitchen. And today I am going to make some Mahi Mahi fish tacos. Now I need to tell you this is not this I repeat, this is not a tutorial. I don't know what I'm doing. We're just gonna throw some stuff together and see what happens. I like fish tacos, I like cabbage, and I like pico de gallo. So let's jump in it. All right, so we're gonna start with a lemon. Um, I'm only going to cut a slice of the lemon out and squirt it onto my cutting board because I read online somewhere that if you squirt lemon on a cutting board before chopping an onion, it'll help minimize the crying. So first on our chopping block is the red onion. I decided to use the red onion first because we are only going to use a little bit of the red onion. And I decided to start chopping onions first just to get all of that out of the way. That's going to be our main ingredient in the pico de gallo. Don't forget to take off those outside layers. And then you start to chop. The method I'm using here, well, there's not really a method. I'm just trying to cut squares, you know. And when I decided I'm finished chopping, I put it into the bowl to make more space on the cutting board. We've got quite a few things to chop, so buckle in. So next we're gonna cut up our white onion and put our little trash to the side. And then here I tried to use that method of cutting through the onion without cutting off actual pieces of the onion. And then I realized that the top of the onion was still just casing. And the most ridiculous part about it is that I had already taken off at least two or three layers. So here I am taking off yet another layer of the onion. I love onions, I really do. They are my favorite vegetable. Dang, onions, can you just not have so many layers? So then I finally got somewhere and my method was working. As you can see, we have a nice pile of white onions over there. At this point, I'm just trying to finely chop it so it's not such huge chunks of onion. I don't mind the chunks, but my family will also be eating these tacos, so I wanted to make it palatable for everyone else. After what feels like forever, I finished cutting the white onion and grabbed one of our Roma tomatoes. As you can see here, I'm trying to pit, I guess, the tomato. I don't really like tomato seeds, it's too mushy for me. So to the side, I'm getting rid of all the seeds and the mushiness. What are those, like veins? What's the proper term for that? Let's find out. According to the Plant Biology Division at UC Davis, it's called the locular cavity. Fun fact for you. Still disgusting. I don't even like the way that sounds. Locular cavity? Ugh. And then I cut the tomato piece in half because I could not get all those seeds out. So same as with the onion pieces, I want to cut the tomatoes into like squares. There's a proper term for that. I should really look these things up. But to do that, I cut it into slivers and then just cut it again into blocks. Oh my gosh, I found a website that tells you the proper cooking terms for how you cut vegetables and everything else. So I will link that down, the, down in the description and we can all learn together and be educated. As I kept adding my ingredients to my bowl, I realized my bowl was way too small, so I had to go and get another one. If you're doing this with me, just make sure you have a big enough bowl in the beginning. That way you don't waste any dishes. Alright, next is our cilantro. You know that whole thing where like cilantro tastes like soap to some people and it tastes delicious to other people? What is it for you? Because I know sometimes cilantro tastes like soap to me but sometimes it's absolutely delicious. So where do you fall on that spectrum? Comment below, I wanna, I wanna know.
Just in case you were wondering, we're starting off making our pico de gallo first. That way, as we cook and prepare everything else, it can chill and all the flavors can come together and just be perfect by the time we're ready to eat it. Last but not least, the lime. Okay, I pointed out this little um, bruise right here. Just to say it doesn't matter. Like, I wasn't saying discard it, but it doesn't matter. It's the outside of the lime, and, you know, even bruised fruits and vegetables need to be eaten, okay? And then from there, I just cut the lime into fours. You'll see with this lime, I rolled it on the cutting board because that just helps bring out the juice a little bit. Oh my gosh, I can't believe even in recording this, I forgot about the jalapeno. So from here, I cut off the stem and then I cut the jalapeno in half. Um, I cut out a bit of the seeds because not all of my family members can take that heat. So if you need to as well, there's no shame, take out those seeds. And then from there, I just kind of rip the jalapeno apart. And then I'm just gonna cut it up again like I did all of our other vegetables and ingredients in this pico de gallo. The time has come I have finished chopping the ingredients that needed to be cut first I add the lime because it needs to be juicy I like my people to get a little juicy you know what I'm saying and then oh girl. <laughs> do you see this face right now mm. wow so anyway I keep squeezing the lime juice in there Ooh, we look at all those colors, yes. All right, so after adding in all of the limes, I mix it up, and yes, that is a chip you just saw. I wanted to know what it tasted like without all the seasonings, and really, it just tastes like vegetables, like, the onion was real strong, and that's about it. So of course, you know, you gotta add in the salt, bring out the extra flavor in all those vegetables that try to hide their flavor. And then next, we got the garlic. And you know, you just wanna add a little bit in there. Oh, okay, maybe not a little bit in there. I actually think I added way too much garlic for the record, so don't add that much garlic. And last but not least, the black pepper. Mix it and mix it and mix it. So just keep on mixing, keep on mixing until you feel like it's done, you've tasted it, and it tastes good. After that, we are going to make the chipotle sauce. I actually found this recipe on Pinterest. Um, yeah, look me up on Pinterest. I'm pretty sure it's in my recipes board. To start, we are using our chipotle peppers and adobo sauce. The recipe calls for two tablespoons, so I literally took two tablespoons of the sauce. Next is the half a cup of sour cream. I just threw that on in the bowl, tried to scoop out as much as I could. And then last is our half a cup of mayonnaise. I don't think it matters um, which kind you use. We use both Miracle Whip and Best Foods in my house. I think in this one, I used Miracle Whip because I couldn't find the Best Foods. Um, personally, I think Best Foods would be the better choice because you don't really want that sweetness. Unless you have a sweet tooth and you want it, go for it. I'm not gonna stop you. Oh, oh, one more thing. Um, I forgot the seasonings. You are supposed to add half a teaspoon of garlic powder and then you mix that all together. And then you're supposed to add in two tablespoons of lime juice, but I'm gonna just squirt in a whole quarter of lime. All right, 
right, so after mixing it for a while, I decided to try it. And it wasn't spicy enough for me. If it's supposed to be Chipotle, I want some spice. So I just poured in some more. There was no measurements. I just poured and hoped for the best. Oh yes, the recipe also calls for one fourth teaspoon of salt. So I just threw a little dash in there. So of course I had to taste it again. I just added a little dollop on the other spoon and it still wasn't spicy enough for me. So I just poured it in. Oh, and, and there goes some more because really it wasn't that spicy. So I would say use at least half the can if you're looking for even a little bit of spice. You will also notice that the sauce is starting to get darker in color. It is now time. So what's happening here is that I found a recipe for blackened mahi-mahi. And I had most of the ingredients, but what I didn't have was onion powder. So I'm trying to just make onion powder by myself <laughs> by crushing the chopped onion. In hindsight, I do not recommend it. Make sure you have onion powder. This was a last minute decision for me. You can do it, but it, it really hurts. I think I got popped in the eye. I mean, look at that mess that I'm making already over by the onion and next to the salt in front of the container. Just do what's best for yourself. Get that onion powder. Cause as you can see, I eventually gave up. Next you add in the black pepper, and this is another one of those things where I was not measuring at all. I don't even remember if the recipe called for actual measurements, but I was just dumping stuff in. So next is the cumin, and then I added some chili powder, and then some oregano, oh I think we need to buy some more soon. And finally the salt. Oh, and the garlic. Can't forget about the garlic. Also, that was another mistake I made. Make sure you have fresh garlic for your pico de gallo. It just tastes so much better. Alright, so I mixed all those seasonings up, and then I realized that was not nearly enough for the fish that I had. So then I just started pouring stuff in again. Literally, no measurements, just throwing stuff in and mixing it because this is supposed to be blackened fish which means you have to coat all of it not just a little sprinkle but we are going to heavily coat each and every piece of fish so then i mixed it all together sniffed it it smelled pretty good And then we have our guest of honor, the Mahi Mahi fish. Um, the brand is Sam's Choice. I got it again from Walmart. And there were three fish fillets in there, but I cut them all in half. And it ended up being enough for me and three other people. And so in order to coat these fish, all I did was grab one and just throw it in there, roll it around, make sure it's completely covered, and then I did the same for all of the rest of them. So we're just gonna speed through that. Aren't they pretty? I decided I wanted the fish to marinate a little bit, really soak up those flavors. So in the meantime, I'm going to cut the cabbage. And the cabbage serves as a little crunch, you know, or a nice little vegetable 
in the taco. I really can't do seafood tacos without the cabbage. The best part, you know, aside from the seafood. And then I started using a cheese grater because my mom was like, why don't you use a grater? And at first, I thought it was a great idea until I started grating it and got mush. I was disgusted and disappointed. So I just discarded the grater and chopped the cabbage into what I wanted it to be. Cause I like the big thick slices of cabbage anyway. I didn't want small shreds of cabbage, you know what I mean? If you decide to do that, go ahead. Let me know how it works for you. But I'm gonna stick to my big chunks. Have you ever seen a plate of fixings that looks so good? It wasn't until after that I realized the camera was not on when I put the fish into the skillet. Sorry, but look at it now. You ready for your close-up fish? Cause this is all about you. Look at that seasoning. Look at how it just bubbles in the oil. Look at that steam, come on. Why don't y'all take a listen? Nice little ASMR for me. And then you want to make sure that you're turning over your pieces of fish to ensure that it's being cooked evenly throughout the whole piece of fish. We can't be getting salmonella and anything else, so please be safe. Cook all sides of your fish, thank you. Do you see the way this piece of fish is trying to fall apart on me? Yes, Lord, that's what we want. Is that chorizo? Is this chorizo? Uh huh. No, that's the fish. Oh, not like chorizo. Probably because the seasoning that I use. And for the final touch, you gotta warm up those tortillas. you ever seen such beautiful tortillas. I made my little taco. We're going to try it. Okay. Okay. Mmm. You know what I'm going to Some cilantro. Mmm. 
little extra line splash. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, what I'm talking about. I am impressed with myself, bro. Hmm. <laughs> so, I'm putting the taco all together. Took turkey, right? Some fish, obviously. Both cabbages. I used two pieces of fish rather than one just because it made more sense to me. And then I added the chipotle sauce. It's actually really good, a lot better. I actually like it a lot better than I thought I would. And you know what I forgot? The pico You know, sometimes you just... Sometimes you just have to add, have to add things in layers so you can taste the different flavors. And that was it. That was the icing on the cake. Okay. So if you want to try it, please do. Let me know in the comments down below. Oh, my bad, y'all. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below what you thought, um, how yours ended up. For a second, I didn't think I cooked the fish long enough, but it's white on the inside, so as long as it's white. Okay, sorry, I'm speaking with turkey in my mouth. And my mama looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> as long as the fish is white all the way through, you're fine. It's fine. Don't let your mind fool you. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me today. Um, we'll try cooking something again another time. Maybe not anytime soon, but another time. Ain't that just divine? The autofocus sound was going the entire last minute of this video, but it's okay. I learned from my mistakes. And it will not happen again. <laughs> What's so funny, Dad? <laughs> oh, no, I'm just, just looking. Just, I like this. You're doing good. Thanks.